Welcome, and thank you for tuning into Voices from Afar. And I am your host, Bill Demarest. And I'm a traveler of both time and space. Be where I have been. Sit with elders of a generation. Top of days for which they sit in the way. All will be revealed. And some of those elders' voices I've brought along with me today are Star, Joy, Scottish John, and or Flair. Largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world. Who knows? We know. And that's why we're here fighting against the propaganda machine run by the powers that should not be. And just never fear or give up hope. And you will find no fear mongering here, only the truth and a bit of humor to help you keep your sanity in a world that's lost its mind. Welcome and greetings to another edition of Voices from Afar. This evening we have a very special guest, very special guest that as soon as I can bring him into the studio because uh, his producer just told me he just walked in. Anyway, tonight's show is going to be very special, and John's producer is still uh, talking to me. I just walked in. We'll be on Skype in two minutes. Oh, thank you, Brendy. Thank you so very much. And while Bill just babbles on, and we sit here. What the hell was that? Sa-la-la-la. Something just hit my house. Somebody just threw something at my house. Hang on. So, Bill, any luck? Yeah, any luck is yes. He told me he's online, and it appears on his Skype to uh, add him to the call. I am really getting frustrated because it says to add him, and it keeps failing. Brendy, 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 what's going on? He is restarting Skype. Thank you, Brandy. Maybe I could uh, add Brendy to the group call. Yeah, thanks, Brendy. Let's see if she'll help us out here. Oh, Brandy, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be if you could bring John Wells closer to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Brendy. Brendy. Hi, Hi. I'm just going downstairs to pick up John's phone. Because he's going to dial you on his phone via Skype. Okay. Uh, that doesn't help get him in the studio. That's the problem. It, uh, did he call that studio number? No, he's going to dial you on Skype. But the Skype is for some reason is not connecting on his computer. And he left his phone in the car. He's just sent me to go in and get the phone in the car. So he can dial you via Skype. Okay. Um, thank you. Two minutes and you'll have it. Okay. Thank you. Like okay, I bye. said, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> thank you. Well, that's pretty bad. Are they uh, messing with Skype? He hasn't even said anything yet. <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> they just know issues. he's going to. <laughs> In all fairness, the internet has been a total nightmare this past three or four days. Between connecting off and, and messages trying to get through. Even John, just before the show, was trying to share something with the, with us. And it was just a nightmare trying to get I haven't seen it yet. I mean, I don't know what they're doing, but the last few days has been really bad. And when we were having our team meeting earlier on today, um, I was just cut off just like that. It was just Skype just totally shut down. I had to re-signing and everything to get back on the call. I mean, it wasn't a problem because we weren't live. But in times like this, when we are live, it's not so good. Um, it was just to bring that point up that it has been bad the last few days. 
And I think everybody's noticing that. Even my neighbour is noticing it. And she's you not know, huge internet. We've had a big um, hit with this solar flare. <laughs> of course. Ah, our guest okay, is Nick. here. Guess who's man. here? Guess who's here? Yes. The man. <laughs> Improvise, adapt, modify, and overcome. How is everybody? Yeah. <laughs> You're waiting. Uh, yeah. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, I would like to welcome, welcome. Here we go. Bring it together. Bring it together. Uh, no, I got you doing it now. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Everybody, take a breath. <gasps> I would like to welcome you aboard Starship Star Vexer, and as captain of your own starship, Arc Midnight, I would like to. Pipe you aboard with Claire, our communications officer, and she did this for you, sir. Well, thank Hello, you very much. people of the world, TFR, and of course the chat room. So tonight we are all very excited to bring you this show, as the guest we have for tonight has been given the voice of talk radio, his soothing voice of talk radio that has broken the airwaves for many years. I am, of course, talking about John B. Wells, who has worked with media outlets, including Coast to Coast. Over the years, has also seen pitfalls, good and bad, of this area of media and truth. I introduce to you, on Voices from Afar, a guest that I, for one, not sure if two hours will cover all the subjects he personally has researched, on top of all the great people he has interviewed himself. With independent research on his show Caravan to Midnight, which I am a personal fan of. Without further ado, I give you John B. Wells. Welcome to Voices from Afar and a personal hello from Lefty Lass in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. Well, in that case, I suppose rather than stand here in the airlock, I should say permission to come aboard. That's exactly <laughs> right. Indeed. Permission to come aboard, sir. Granted. I was going to introduce you to my crew, uh, just their names one at a time. We have Star. She is the oracle of our crew. Joy is the counselor of our crew. And we have Scottish John. We have our own Scott aboard our crew. He's not Scotty. And he is our utility man. And we are all going to just uh, interview you per se, let's just say one at a time. And since Claire did such a great job of piping you aboard, sir, Claire, you're up, dear, front and center. <laughs> Hi there. Um, very good to speak to you, um, especially from somebody that's just starting out on this journey um, in media. I fell into it. I didn't really realize what we were doing, really, um, and just falling in it. I personally would like to know if you've seen a decline in independent media since you started. And if so, what factors have been the problem? Has it been the contents, the sources, the credibility, or just simply people not um, going so far but not wanting to risk anymore, so just stop? I was just, that is one of the biggest questions because we were just saying about the Skype problems. YouTube, things like that, just before you came on there. So I thought I'd start with one of the more difficult ones, sorry. <laughs> no, not a problem. Um, you know, that's, a, that's a, actually a, a, a kind of a complex question. The, um, the thing is, is I see a proliferation of, um, of new sites, but some of the established um, alternative outfits, if you will, mm, they seem to be in a little bit too much of a hurry to maintain some sort of dominance, whether real or imaginary. So the problem now is is not so much that we don't have uh, ample number, uh, ample numbers of people in alternative media. In fact, I, I mean, I think I'm delighted to see it. But what's happened now is that uh, mainstream is, of course, threatened. Mainstream is the money. And so they don't launch particularly um, sophisticated initiatives against alternative media. But, you know, they, they, like, they like to ridicule, of course. And the thing is, is that um, now we need to be very, very careful in the, with, the, with the facts. We have to be very careful with the facts. And if we don't know 
uh, the answer to a question. We need to just say we don't know. But we'll get back to it when we have more information. If we don't do that, then uh, we're just going to be, oh, those people don't know what they're talking about. You know, you're liable to get anything over there. We just we need to be more professional than the so-called professionals, meaning even people who are not being paid to do what they do, because that's really all professional means. You know, you, as an amateur, you, you do it because you love the work. And then hopefully one day you will be good enough to actually be paid for it. Well, uh, whether whether you're amateur or professional, you have to you have to act like you're professional, like like people are paying you for this, and therefore you have to give them their money's worth. And um, whether the money's real or imaginary, I restate, it's a tautology, I suppose. But um, but yeah, that's, that, that, that's the biggest problem. Yeah, that's the biggest problem is just get, getting the facts straight and and not injecting these wild scenarios. Uh, and just dwelling on them and just dwelling on them and just so absolutely sure you're right when you're not. Uh, for example, we did not go in, we didn't go anywhere near this Pizzagate thing. I am sure that that um, criminal pedophilia is rampant throughout the the, uh, the halls of power wherever they may be found, whether government or corporate, which is which. But. If you don't have enough information other than Podesta's emails, which admittedly are a bit creepy, but if that's really all we have to go on, I, I think we should wait until we have something else <clears throat> before we proceed. So that's just one example. Yeah, see, I, I agree with that as well. And I, I have a group on Facebook that's been up and running for three years, um, just exchanging news, really finding out if the news is fake, real, and I've even found problems. I mean, I used to get a lot more into the group even than what I do now, just because it takes so much more time to check things out now. Um, altogether, uh, any source you have to go to. Uh, quite often, the source isn't in the first thing you read. You often have to go through a few things. which takes up time as well. So it isn't as easy as it was when I first started like the group just to put things into it. So I definitely notice the difference. So you must do in all the years that you've done it, I definitely. Um, my, another question I really wanted to ask was um, all the great interviews you've done over the years, what's your most standout interview and your most standout guest if it's not the same? You know, it, it would be really hard to pick just one. Mm -hmm. really would. Because uh, just, just recently... Um, uh, two people came on, uh, Field McConnell and then Dr. David Janda, and they were both extraordinary. And uh, Peter Vincent Pry, who is working with Homeland Security on this, uh, what many people feel is an imminent uh, EMP threat to our power grid, he was spectacular. Hugo Fugan was spectacular, who absolutely completely deconstructed the entire uh, carav uh, Cessna caravan crash carrying Loretta Fuddy, and she was the only fatality and it just by the time he was finished we spoke with him for over seven hours we had to make it into a two-part program because we just couldn't let it go and he had so much information i wanted everybody to see it so um and then some of the some of the um you know dr Hel helen caldicott came on and um and she of course is she's an icon in the anti-nuclear thing and and so many others uh dr dimitra and Dimitris, She's fabulous, and and just I can't really just pick one. However, if I were going to, it would not be one that happened when I was on uh, Caravan to Midnight, as I am now. The one that I suppose really, really stands out is an interview with the late great Ray Bradbury, and that was on Coast to Coast back in two thousand eight, and it was just amazing. Okay, I'll need to go and look that one up now. I can, I'm not familiar with that one, so I will be looking that one up now you've said that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah, but having so many good people coming on, like even our show, everybody's got a piece of information. It's it's what you take from it yourself and and what you know in your heart, I suppose, as well. It, it, everything's open to interpretation as well, I think. Um, so all these great independent researchers are brilliant um, independently or collectively they're they're great so I agree with you there there's no one even I can pick and you've done a lot longer 
But I'll be sure to look up that one that you definitely mentioned from uh, Close to the Scores. Well, James O'Keefe was really good too. He was on just, I don't know, a month or a little over a month ago. Uh, he was excellent with um, the man behind Project think- Veritas. That was that was a blast yeah. talking to him. Yeah, 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 that was a good one. Yeah, I, I, I catch most of them on YouTube um, through your channel. Uh, without fail, I always check in, just check, see what's going on. So it's a great pleasure to uh, speak to you tonight. Um, I think I'm passing over back to somebody else now. Well, thanks. There. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just uh, running around between three computers and getting stuff organized. Anyway, uh, we'll be back uh, in three minutes, in about 30 seconds. And I want to thank you so much, John. And I uh, will talk to you on the other side and introduce you to the rest of our crew. And I am, uh, I think I can calm down now. You're in studio with us and we did overcome. Thank you. Yes, so we did. Very much. Yes, we yes, did. We, and Fabulous. we will continue to do so. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No need for sir. It says I'm still on air. The clock is a bit off, but life goes on. So we are going to be back in three minutes. Okay, mute everybody, mute everybody. <laughs> we are yes. TFR. <laughs> My fate and destiny is all I need to prevail. Truth Frequency Radio. And welcome to the triumphant event of uh, Starship Star Vexer and Arc Midnight coming together in one show, one place, one time. And now, John B., I would like to introduce you to Star the Oracle. Hello, John. I'm Star the Oracle. I'm a researcher since childhood of the prophecies, the supernatural, the paranormal, and spirituality, and a truth seeker. I'm an empath and seer, card reader, student of the natural medicines. I'm a mother of two daughters, former marine and business owner. I have learned much from you and your guests over the years in in my quest for all of the above mentioned. Thank you for all of that, and thank you for joining us tonight. Well, thank you. That's a that's a do I call you Star or? <laughs> no, Star. Star is our official designation. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just, my name's right. Sharon. But you can call. Me, yeah. My name's Sharon. You can call me Star. Okay. Yeah, All I'm right, Star. Fantastic. Well, thanks for thanks thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. It's good You're to be very you. welcome. Wow, dude. I've got you on the radio with me. This is like blowing my mind. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's my my true honest self there. I don't know what I sound like in my interview. Um, it's all as the phrase, as the as the expression goes, it's all good, right? It is. I say that too. It's all good. I yeah. yeah. So when you took over Coast to Coast, and I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about that, but I I started listening to you and your voice, and so then when you started doing Caravan, as I looked you up there, and then I too catch your especially. I love your new new segments you're doing. Yeah. It's a great way to catch up. Um, those are awesome. So the Caravan at Midnight thing and is, was an excellent move with all that. And I am, I'm glad you did. And I'm glad you're still going. And and now that I'm in the radio, too, I'm starting to pay a different type of attention to how you do things. So that I'm picking up some perks here and there, hopefully. Um, I don't gotcha. have your I don't have your voice, though. <laughs> No, no, that would be a little unusual, though. So <laughs> well, yeah. well, obviously, yes. I've got my own voice. Um, not exactly comfortable with my own voice, but I have it. No, it's great. Um, You've got a great oh, voice. Oh, thank you, sir. Wow. So, would, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what to ask you. This is funny. Like, UFOs or, like, you know, Secret alien bases stuff, or that's still UFOs, or Sasquatches, which I fell in love with when I was a kid, or, wow, what's your favorite topic, I guess? You know what, lately, um, you know, where Big, Bigfoot is concerned, I'm always like, listen, I'm sure that they exist. Too many far-flung cultures, separated by ridiculous distances, have seen things like this, mm-hmm. but... <sighs> Hard until evidence. I actually until I actually see one, you know, let's uh let's not get too crazy with it, you know, because I want to see one. But that's probably just me. That the um flying no, saucers everybody knows that they're out there. Uh the jury's still out on whether or not well, let's see. So what is it? Is it uh is it us 
uh, coming back from the future, or is it uh, angels and demons as depicted in Scripture? Um, I'm kind of ten I tend to go with that. I find the Bible to be an extraordinarily supernatural book. People yes, say I like the paranormal. It's like really <laughs> read the Bible. It doesn't get much more paranormal than that. But uh, you know, as as far as uh, nuts and bolts and stuff that humans do. I'm very curious as to why all this interest in Antarctica. What is John Kerry doing down there, and why? Why did Buzz Aldrin go? And uh, what, what's the interest? And you got people saying, "Oh no, you can't go there. Nothing goes on there." It's like, no, uh, no you can go there, and quite a bit goes on there. So I, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where they got that. But, you know um, what? You know what came to my mind. Um, which story was it? Was it a Superman? Was it one of them when the Titans were frozen in ice? And they weren't supposed to awaken them. But they awoke the titans, the giants, the ice demons, the the ones down, well, frozen, tucked far away, put down there for a reason, so nobody would touch them or find them. And then they got awoken. And I have this whole, like, scenario going through my head of they, they've done messed up something. Then you hear on the other rumor news channels that, yeah, there's aliens down there. There's just bases. You know, there there's a war going on. And it's so, like, yeah, whatever. It's not changing what I'm having for dinner. So, yeah. Hey. Well, um, well, you know, what do you think about the hollow earth? You know, I, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not a supporter of the, the flat earth at all. I've, I've gained too much altitude in various aircraft to ever go with that. I'm, I can't do it. And Thank even you, some either. people in the crew are going, you know, some people in the crew have done good, excellent. And they said, you know, the easiest thing to do is just talk to them. It's like, and I kind of go into Merlin then, as depicted by Nicole Williams in Excalibur. I <laughs> will decide who I will speak to and if it is up to me to decide which and whatever. I'm not doing it. Um, even Art Bell wouldn't do it. I mean, he actually got one of them on there. We've contacted uh, astrophysicists and all, and they're like... Uh, no, sorry, too silly. So, but this hollow Earth thing. Now that's something else. I don't mean like it's a like it's a, a a snowball like you put on your desk. You know, one of those things where you shake it and the snow goes around. I don't mean like hollow. The whole thing's hollow. But just knowing what little I do about um, about Wells, England, uh, from which the family hails. Uh, there are caves there that go so deep they've never been completely explored. That that is my understanding, and they they discover artifacts that they can't even date. They have no idea what period, what people, or or what what is this. So wow. you know, and and then when you go to scripture, and the devil says he spends his time walking up and down in it. It's like really hmm. okay, all right. So. Who knows? Now, for a long time, you know, people thought that uh, the tor, the big tower there uh, in England, was the entrance to the underworld. There's always been this talk about the underworld, the underworld. So maybe there really is an underworld, and maybe that's why we don't see the. Are they big feet or big foots? The Yetis, the big furry guys. Yeah. Or maybe I don't big know. furry girls. Um, maybe they live. Maybe they live underground. That's why you don't see them on the surface that much. I would think that you would, but. Um, Something's going on in, in Antarctica because I don't think it was just a packet boat ride to take the family and go and do something different. That was just I, I don't I don't understand it not yet anyway. But I understand there are there are underground lakes. Some of them are a few thousand feet down, and um, the ones that they've been able to reach, they're discovering right. different uh, species and, and um, different uh, different microbes, different uh, organisms down there they haven't ever seen on the surface. And it's just about the old uh, room temperature when it was modified to a, to a 68. I think it's 68 for winter and 72 for summer. But anyway, it's it's comfortable down there. There's no, it's not cold at all. So, and we know the Nazis were really interested in, in it too, with New Schwabia land and all of that. And we know that Admiral Richard Byrd ran into a, a bunch of blowback when he went down there, lost a bunch of men and planes and a few ships mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, nobody ever said he was crazy. They said Forrestal was crazy, but of course he wasn't. He was murdered. But uh, but um, Richard Byrd, no, he, he was never deemed any kind of a medical case. So well, you, you know we have that. you know we have Brooks Agnew in his show um, X Squared Radio on here on Truth Frequency Radio, and he is like the person that comes up when you Google Hollow Earth. He has done yeah. the studying in it, so. 
I need to sit down and pick his brain on all of it because I don't even have all the Hollow Earth info out of his head yet. So it'd be interesting. And we had a couple questions. Who's got a question? There's a couple in the chat. Somebody chime in. Who was it? Okay. Uh, Claire, it's going to be like 1 o'clock in the morning before uh, this show is over. Uh, so we're going to let Claire jump in here. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, well, it was, it was just to go um, along with the flat earth thing. Um, a lot of it, 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 I think, is put there to be a decisive um, issues to divide people. And I, th- I think one of the flat earth, a lot of the flat earth is not just about the flat earth, is it? It's a lot to do with the culture of the flat earth rather than looking at alternatives like yourself saying about whole hollow earth or what, whatever it, the theory could be is just it's more fixed on that one and that's where I was just wanting to say about more like the psyop part of what we're seeing in the media at the moment on all sides of media uh, mainstream as much as uh, and I just wondered what you thought just because we had mentioned flat earth that was the only reason I thought it was relevant to bring up there because I do think it, it's one on the same slightly, but there is also a theory of flat earth, which I do realise it's just, it's been mixed up. I was just wondering how you feel about that part of it. Well, I entirely agree. In fact, I, I stated on uh, Ark Midnight, the terrestrial adjunct to Caravan to Midnight, and many times on, on Caravan, that I think it is a, a PSYOP, and that uh, PSYOPs are not, only, are, are not always conducted in some you know, really awesome, sophisticated manner. Some of them actually are quite crude, and uh, I think this is one of those those uh, those crude psyops. It's um, and it and it is a case for division, but but something more. At the University of Cape Town, some genius down there has decided that all contemporary science is now is is to be is to be regarded as racist, and all contemporary science must be discarded because it is racist and science needs to start over. Now, these are the same geniuses who believe that the uh, that the white engineers are racist because they built the water reservoirs too big, and they simply will not fill up completely. But if they had not been racist, they would have known that, uh, that the best thing to do was build a small reservoir so that it would fill up. I mean, what? <sighs> It's it's just extraordinary, and, the, and this is the the um, this is the same group that burns the administration building. You know, they want the Rhodes Scholarship; they just don't want the statue of a statue of Rhodes. And so, when they finish burning the administration buildings, and they build their build, then they burn their dormitories, and then they insist that um, that the citizens, the the white folks, take them in because they don't have any place to live now because they set fire to it. To me, this is on a par with what the flat Earth people are doing. And I think that it that it actually okay. is a psyop. These people apparently have have nothing to to do all day except uh, are, now they're arguing with each other. So we're we're expected <laughs> to believe that a graphic artist was let in on the big secret that the Earth is flat by yeah. NASA when he worked for them. It's like huh. no, they they didn't let you in on anything of the sort, you know. And and then you know the, a, a guy took a selfie from the uh, from the from the um, International Space Station showing the earth behind him and he said, you know, I'm sure, you know, the naysayers will say this is fake too. And he's, he's got his phone and he took a selfie. Mm. So it's a, there, there is a movement underway. I really mean this to retard knowledge. Look at common core, look at people graduating from high school, graduating from high school, no child left behind. I thought that what that meant was Every one of them is going to be educated, but it doesn't. It means every one of them is going to be graduated, whether they've learned anything or not. Well, I've got my, I've got my high school diploma. Well, well it's, it's time. We, we are in such a mess now. It's time for me to bring in our counselor, Joy. And this is a little something she prepared ahead of time. Hi, John. This is Joy. And I just wanted to say that it seems that when our country is at its greatest peril, that its true patriots will rise and take stand. There are many notable names in the alternative media that have stepped up and are on the front line, and there's none more prominent than you. So with our country and our very way of life being threatened, it is going to take courage, commitment, and dedication on all our parts to take a stand because silence is consent. So it is an honor that you've agreed to add your distinguished voice to our voices from afar here on TFR this evening. And I give you, Joy, our counselor. 
Wow. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi, Joy. It's nice to have your distinguished voice here to sing in the choir, Voices from Afar. Well, thank you very much. You're very kind. I was uh, had another question for you, kind of on an economic uh, theme, but you guys started talking about Antarctica, and I ran across something that I haven't heard anyone else talking about, but it seems to be a big flack about. Has anyone heard of the Ark of Gabriel? Uh, we have not had any contact from anybody about that particular subject, no. Okay. I'm going to read a little bit about here what uh, what they, what this is, and it calls uh, wild rumors that a fable device or weapon called the Ark of Gabriel has been found under the Masjid al-Haram Mosque, the holiest site in Islam, or sweeping across the darker corners of the Internet. Legend tells us that Archangel Gabriel who told the Virgin Mary she would give birth to Jesus and dictated the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad, also entrusted an ark or a box of immense power to the founder, founder of the Islamic, I mean, of Muslim faith. Mohammed was told to bury the ark in a shrine at a place of worship for it to be brought out to the at the end of the world as it approaches. Paranoid survivalists believe Saudi Arabia has uncovered the ark during a major construction project at the Grand Mosque and handed it to the Russians. And they claim Russian military is taking the art to the Antarctic, possibly to a former Nazi UFO base. So this thing is supposed to have the power. The people that dug it up, uh, they were uh, uh, killed. There was about 1,400 people killed because of this. It's supposed to have some kind of like an atomic blast to it that killed people. And they kind of covered it up and saying, well, these people were stampeded, stampeded around the, you know, the, the black cube that they go around when they do their yearly pilgrimage to Mecca. So I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, everything's going to the Antarctic. Yeah. Well, it certainly has all the components for a good story, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm inclined to be, um, reserved until, so we, let's see, we got the Saudis. We got the Russians, we got the Nazis, mm -hmm. we got the uh, we got Gabriel, we got Muhammad, and we've got an Ark. At mm -hmm. this moment, I'm I'm inclined to be uh, not, uh, well. Uh, to, not I'll a conspiracy first. theorist, right? Not a conspiracy theorist. No, you know it's it's um it, it sounds really really excellent, but well, it is intriguing. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I know the Nazis were interested in, in all sorts of things like that. And uh, I'm not going to say it's uh, I'm not going to say it's not um, it's not possible, and I'm not going to just declare that it's not true. I'm just going to say, wow, there sure are a lot of interesting components there, <laughs> Russians mm -hmm. and Saudis and and uh, Muslims and Nazis. Wow, it's got all the what buzzwords, a, doesn't it? It certainly well, does. And Joy, I wanted you to share a little bit about yourself with John before you got into questions. Because Joy, uh, I dragged Joy into being a crew member. Uh, we shanghaied her. She came skicking, skicking, right? Kicking and <laughs> screaming. She, well, she did a lot of skicking too, but she came in <laughs> kicking and screaming. And she is in the trenches. She is surrounded by snowflakes and uh, family oh, members. Boy. She can't. She can't even tell her family members that she voted for Trump. She voted for uh, what's her name? But anyway. Joy, say hello to John. <laughs> Hi, John. Well, well. Yeah, I uh, my family just about uh, disowned me, and I got all kinds of lectures because I, I voted for Trump. And my neighborhood around here, they wore black uh, whenever Trump was elected. And, of course, they were in with wearing the pink hats and a big march downtown. And, oh, and uh, they're so radical. And... Uh, and, be, and they were just all Hillary. It was all Hillary. They didn't want to hear one thing about her. So I have to be dancing really careful around the people I live around. It's kind of hard. Yeah. And then uh, we went and said it, uh, said, said it all over the all over the air here now. So now you're really in trouble. Um, it's too bad that um, people on the left side of things cling to that ideology so tightly. But uh, just a few days ago, we had someone on who was a... Uh, you know, a complete left-wing person, and uh, was complaining about the uh, the travel ban because it's you know it's a Muslim ban, 
And as the conversation goes on, it took about 15 or maybe 20 seconds for this to, to be revealed. She talked about how these these countries that are majority Muslim, you know, that it's a it's not just a travel restriction. It, it's a Muslim ban. And she says, and, but Saudi Arabia, you know, they can come and go as they please. And this other one here, she named some other one. They can come and, know, come and go as they please. And I said, well, do you not understand that you just completely undid your own argument? So... It's just it's even it's even more racist and xenophobic than we thought, because not only is it a Muslim ban, but only certain Muslims are going to be banned. Oh, that is bad. That really is bad. She absolutely did not get it. It's like you just said it was a Muslim ban. And then the next thing out of your mouth was is that Saudi Arabia, which is practices the most hardcore of, of the Muslim sects tenets, that would be Wahhabi. I mean, they, they set the record for uh, beheadings and amputations now for, I don't know, four or five years running. Uh, so what are you talking about? But that's the problem with the left. You know, so do we have to love them? <laughs> we do. We do. We have to love them. That's that's what Christ said to do. But he didn't say anything about liking them. <laughs> yeah, there and you go. So that's it. You know, we don't just throw them away unless unless they want to supplant our beliefs with theirs. I think they're, the biggest problem, uh, the biggest source of their frustration is that effectively they worship themselves. You know, as uh, as uh, as Brandy told me um, one time, just during one of our many conversations about this stuff, the human being is, is designed to worship, and it will worship something. Uh, so behold, the religion of the left and their zealots, it, and it's just the way it is. They will not be shifted. They will not be cajoled. They will not be convinced. They won't even they won't even tolerate being shown evidence because they just know somehow it's wrong. You know, I'm pretty rough on those people. You know, I, there are some people pretty close to me, but but uh, but I can't I can't spend much time with them because inevitably it will lead to some political discourse. And at some point, I'm going to say, well, this is just idiotic. I can't I can't go on with it. Well, are you saying I'm an idiot? Well, effectively, yes. Um, now, per, because you're a human being and you can learn, you can adapt, and you can grow. And I'm not going to say you're uh, in a permanent state of uh, of idiocy, but uh, it, it is possible you may make the choice to remain in it. So that, that's just uh, that's just how it is. I mean, whoever thought that a candidate would go before their supporters and say, "I'm going to raise taxes, hooray! I want the borders to be open, hooray! I'm going to bring in uh, more people of uh, of a Mohammedan uh, culture and uh, stuff as many of them as I can into predominantly." Uh, uh, Christian areas. Hooray! I mean, do they not understand that when their usefulness is spent, they're going to be discarded as well? No, they don't. Joseph Stalin wasn't referring to his own people as useful idiots. He was referring to Americans who were extolling the virtues of communism and, and the works of Karl Marx and Lenin. He, was, he called them useful idiots. And that's what they are. But people think that he was talking about his own people because he was just so mean. No, he was talking about us. And Joe Stalin was a pretty rough cat. And you see the way these people act. You know, they're, they're uh, I mean, I've never seen, frankly, you better stop me here pretty quick because I've never seen such a disgusting excuse for supposedly evolved human beings in my life. If they're not throwing their toys out of their, out of their play pans, and, and, and running, fleeing to safe spaces because their feelings are hurt. They're out in the street with a mask on like a real coward and destroying other people's property. And then somebody tells the cops to stand down and let them do that. Just like that idiot mayor in, uh, was it Baltimore, that said, well, you know, for people who wanted to destroy, you know, we kind of we made a space for them to tear stuff up and destroy if they wanted to. I mean, why coddle these people? I mean, you know, my feeling is that the one, you look at a country like South Africa, and what it was, and what it is now, and then you see the picture of Soros standing there next to F.W. de Klerk. I call him the willing dupe, and he was, and not a very nice man at all. He divorced his wife, married his best friend's wife or his brother's wife or something, and his, his original wife wound up getting murdered. You know, who, who knows why that happened? Luck of the draw, maybe. But um, it's time for us to recognize that we are, I think the women are waiting for us to be men again. I think we should remember we are the men of the West, yeah. and we have we have built civilizations. It's like, whoa, what are you, some sort of a racist or something? No, not really. 
I mean, really, my race is, is actually quite pathetic. All we did was go to the moon, split the atom, build ships that sail on the surface as well as under the surface of the ocean, build civilizations, and, <laughs> and you know, develop all the tech that's uh, widely distributed. The Chinese are falling all over themselves to steal our stuff and then sell it to, uh, back to us cheaper. So, actually, the white, white race is completely pathetic. Um, but it should be noted, though, that the ones that they would have take over, uh, they're, they, black people go to Africa because it's the motherland. And in, in, invariably, they hook up with a with a uh, a Caucasian tour guide. Treat them poorly, real poorly. And by the time they've been there a few days, they can't wait to get back on the plane and get back home. Oh, it's the motherland. This is just really it. It's like, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. You put your gang banging Alpha Sierra Sierra out there in the bush for a little while. Well, let's see if you make it ten minutes. Because guess what's going to happen? Another black guy is going to come over and kill you. It's just the way it is. So I go back to where I originally started, which is, why are the women being put in a position to have the strength? Why are these men turning into dis- disgusting little ba- little babies? I would say something else, but I can't on your program. But it has to do with breastfeeding. And the second word is babies. Um, <laughs> why are they turning into these hopeless little weenies? Where is the testic- testicular as well as the intestinal fortitude? Why are the women being being the one being put in the position of going out and, and making the living, having the children, and being the most, frankly, in, in many cases, the most articulate? You know what I'm saying? Why? When are we going to be men again? I'm Open. glad you brought that subject up because when I have a chance to interview you, you've covered so many subjects I have on my mind, and we'll be back in... Three minutes, and we're going to bring in our utility man. Uh, John has a toast just for you, and I will play that. Scottish John, a chance to woo uh, our friend with a toast. So here we go, John. I used to listen to you on Coast to Coast. They gave you the boot, and now Coast is toast. Now I'm an expert on Bigfoot and Ghost. Using noise, I can't even boast. Now you're the man in the caravan heading to the midnight hour. Sharing your kind of knowledge like a teacher in college, the kind we want to devour. So I just want to offer this wee bit of rap. It's pure Scottish, it can't be crap. You keep your horse and you can keep your HG. I'm a man of discernment, give me some John B. Wow. <laughs> Don't you love it? That was amazing. Oh, man. <laughs> That's our Scottish John, and uh, he, 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 anyway, Scottish John, say hello to John B. How are you doing, John? Hey, I'm doing all right. How are you, sir? Great, man. What a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, it's mutual, I'm sure. Wow. Well, that was let, me, uh, let me, uh, let me kick off with this one. Uh, I think it was about three weeks ago on Saturday night, I, uh, I just got knocked out of a poker tournament, I think. And I just flipped back over to my Facebook page, and there was your thing, Arc to Midnight. So I click on that, and who are you talking to but one of my dearest friends in the world, Dr. Laura Presley. Oh, yeah, she's such so a great girl. That was quite a moment. That was quite a moment. I'm usually angry when I lose at poker, but that night it was, uh, what do they call it, synchronicity or serendipity or something like that? Maybe a little of both, yeah. There you go, yeah. But... Um, Thanks to you, I have <laughs> I've now become an expert on Bigfoot and ghosts and haunted houses because since your ignominious exit from coast to coast, that seemed to be all they ever talked about. And oh, my God. But it has kind of worked out for me in one way because there's a few bars in my neighborhood that have hired me to come in about 15 to 20 minutes before last orders and start talking about Bigfoot and haunted houses and ghosts, and they no longer have any problem clearing out the bar at closing time. Oh, John, John, John. uh, John, John, John. What a a sad world. eh? (laughs) As I I say to these guys, I say to these guys the other week there, I made up this daft wee joke, I said, what we... If you if you cross me with Bigfoot, would you call me Sasquatch, John? Absolutely. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, I, I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to dwell on the coast to coast thing except to say I no longer listen to it because since your departure, there's been incidents, and I've just finally said, Nah, screw it. 
I can't listen to this crap anymore. So we are no longer uh, companions in, <laughs> I was going to say, in my bed. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> sound right, does it? Oh, that's a wrong show. I know, yeah. I uh, I have to listen to repeats of Alex Jones when I go to bed now to put me wow. Oh my God! You listen yeah. to Alex to go to sleep. Wow, that's that's strong stuff. <laughs> I'll have the volume down low, you know. Oh yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. the best thing that ever one of the best things that ever happened to me was being hired by Coase, and the second best thing that happened was being let go by Coase. Yeah, you go. So uh, it was. So I say about the Marine Corps. Yeah. <laughs> the Marine okay. Corps. It was a little bit like the Marine Corps, but without the guns. You don't want to mention those, you know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's the best thing ask, I did. Best thing I got out of. Go ahead, John. I'm. So, I was going to ask your opinion. Obviously, you know, you know what happened in Westminster last week. So yeah, yeah. And uh, I always, I follow, I follow the news every day from back home. And you know, as soon as I heard about that, you know, given the kind of business we're in, right away, you know, your spidey sense goes off, and you think, okay, what the hell is going on here? Now, I used to live about five minutes away away from, from Westminster there. So I know that area very well, and I've passed by that corner of Westminster Bridge at, at Parliament there, God, thousands of times. And when when I got to hear some of the details of this thing, where this, this guy in a car had mounted the pavement, or the sidewalk, as you guys call it, so uh, in the middle of the bridge, I thought, well, that's that's a really strange thing to do. Um, and he actually, he made his way into that little parking area in through the gates. I don't know how the hell he did that. Well, I found out part of the reason for this is the, like the Pentagon on 9-11. Now, I'm sure you know that London is renowned for having more security cameras, CCTV cameras than any other city in the world. But this guy managed to get his car that far, that close to the gates, and actually to get past, there's two policemen usually on duty there. Just to clear something up that people, some people may be a bit confused about, they don't close those gates. They're, they're permanently left open because they're old-fashioned gates. They're on a hinge. They're not these electronic closing gates. But the traffic in and out of there, because it's so close to Downing Street, is pretty constant throughout the day. So they don't, they don't want to be bothered with closing them. But... Uh, uh, it, it stinks. It absolutely stinks that that guy actually got in there and sadly, very sadly, ended up being able to kill a policeman. Um, I mean, the, the CC camera's not working? Come on. Who are you trying to kid? What do you think of that? Well, yeah, oh, that yeah. combined with uh, MI5 supposedly knew him and uh, he was uh, allowed to remain there. You know, it's a... Uh, look... It's 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 just stupid, John. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is, is if I were going to get real wild with it and decide, okay, this really is a very very serious psyop. Well, what mm-hmm. would the components be? Well, first of all, we'll impose these people on the indigenous population, and then we'll uh, we'll track them. But if they do something, no big deal. So we'll hit the citizenry with two levels of fear. One is uh, just walking around uh, among them, knowing their propensity for violence. And then the second level of fear is we'll let them actually commit it, even though we have them on our radar screens. And when people say, look, I mean, I I go back to the the women, the the woman out there doing the... uh, doing the loudest and most articulate, you know, calling for some sort of sanity. And that would be uh, that little gal, Katie Hopkins. I, I want to say she she wrote an article in, I think it was Daily Mail, about how we we can't keep doing this at all. Yeah. You know, and, and you can't. I mean, but, um, I mean, again, this, um, some woman, I saw her today, she's a, uh, She's she's got an African last name and she's clearly an African individual and she just thinks it's wrong. It's wrong for for murderers and rapists to be deported from Sweden because, well, the Swedes, if they commit a murder or a rape, they're not deported. It's like, well, 
but they live there. It's like, well, we need to have a uniform policy. I mean, this is the kind of idiocy. I mean, it would have been fine with me if, if this information had never had, had never reached my eyes, uh, let alone brain. But because it is out there, because they give a person like this any place on any tabloid or any major news outlet or anywhere, the fact that we even acknowledge their ridiculous doctrine, it, it's, it's, there's the, on the sideband, what we're being informed is that it's all right and that we must tolerate all opinions, no matter how ludicrous they may be. And what effect does this have? Well, it demoralizes the citizenry. Because then they begin to think, really, our our elected officials, our so-called leaders, are okay with this. Who is it that they're afraid of offending? You know, that little guy, Rodrigo Duterte, over in the Philippines, I think he's got it down. To, you know, he's a nasty little thing, but, uh, but uh, you always know where you stand with him. And I don't understand why these politicians, we're going to have an election, and you're going to elect somebody... And then they're going to permit this. They they won't stand up for their citizens. They won't they won't eject the criminals. They well, won't pop a chip in their backsides and say, "Don't come over here again," because we're going to wand you. And and if you are picked up like that, you're going to wind up in some place like Ghana. Okay. I don't speaking get it. speaking of the uh, attack in in England there, uh, and the Illuminati numbers three twenty two and nine eleven. This attack supposedly happened on 322 which is documented and it happened at 911 now if that isn't a code that they did what they wanted to do when they did it that's another whole story but no, yeah freaks everybody knows it doesn't oh, yeah. surprise me in the least yeah uh john i a few few things i wanted to bring up is uh when did you realize that you were a force to contend with I want to know when you knew that you had reached a level that I could only hope to attain. And I have one other question with that. Have you ever met or seen a person, one person that stuck in your mind forever? I mean, you don't even have to meet this person. Just be in the same room with this person. Uh, have you ever run across anybody that made an impression on you for the rest of your life? Yeah, that would have to be Patrick McGowan. The uh, the actor actually, because that was really you were see, really seeing Pat when he did his uh, when he did his prisoner series particularly that was Pat having uh, actually spoken with his daughter uh, Catherine and I, and I asked her was he like this all the time and she said yeah he was so that's really him that we're seeing pretty much yeah uh, he he tried to warn us in that in that prisoner series that. Just privacy, where we are today, yeah. Yeah, absolutely everything. Your privacy is gone. Continual surveillance, mind control. You must conform. You're not, you know, to, to, for you to have a name. You know, that's 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 vanity. You need a number. That's all you need is a number. And for my first question, when what was the moment you realized that you were a captain of a starship and you had your own force behind you? Was there a moment? You know, I'm not going to say that there really was, but but I can tell you that when I left Coast, I, I'd already fired up Caravan, and when uh, when uh, Coast let me go, then uh, when all these people began to join the Caravan, it was like, wow, I think there was somebody listening out there, and apparently some of them found value in it, and here they came. I mean, and, and it was uh, it was really quite gratifying because I, I never could get the, the straight answer on on what the listenership was, but when I did finally get it, it was actually quite high. So yeah, that, that, I'm sure that was it. It was probably that little that little nether area between leaving coast on twenty something, whatever January and um, and February third when we started when we put on our first program. I wanted to delay the launch about thirty days and and then change my mind and just said no, let's just let's just do it. You know, let's just, yep. let's just go for it. Let's not even let it cool off. Let's just go. Yep, and uh, I'm going to throw it back to uh, Scottish John. He has something to say, but first I wanted to say. Uh, I realized that I had arrived when I spoke to the Moriarty's and it was the most important show I ever did. And then to speak to Doug Weed and inform uh, 
Washington insider of exactly what alternative radio uh, knew. And now that uh, you've agreed to do Voices from Afar, I am well assured that I am on my way to big things when it comes to not I'm not talking monetary and I'm not talking fame and fortune. I'm simply talking about getting a message out that is so important and with my crew that is just so enjoyable. And so I'm going to uh, throw it back to John. Yeah, I just wanted to answer a question to, I think it was Daryl in the chat room, he just mentioned the police that uh, stand outside Downing Street are armed. Well, actually, those two cops that usually man the gates at Westminster, they used to be armed, but for some reason, some of the members of Parliament decided that uh, they wanted them disarmed. Don't know why. Mm. I I know. Um, Now, just... Oh, Bill, you just reminded me of something as well I'd made a note of. Um, the date of that incident, 3.22. Now, you said it happened at 9.10 in the morning or 9.11 in the morning? I heard 9.11. Uh, well, I, I saw a, um, a photograph online there, and Big Ben was reading 3.22. And also, coincidentally, Fox News ran an article about it, which lasted three minutes, 22 seconds, if you can believe that. <laughs> so oh typical. My God. Just weird. Just That's weird. just weird, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but, now, John, um, uh, we're, just another thing, I just want to get this off my chest, because it's just really weird. That uh, right. mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, they had a sort of an impromptu uh respect service kind of thing up at Trafalgar Square that night and he was one of the speakers and apparently he stood there with his hands in his pockets addressing the crowd and a lot of people were really pissed off about that understandably so I mean I thought that was very disrespectful yeah I would agree with you did you just drop off no I'm sorry I was just no, waiting still there. yeah no no um, well this, uh, who, who elected him anyway oh I have no idea I have right. no idea. I, um, you know, I've lived here 18 years and I really wasn't following the political scene back home because after the Thatcher years, I needed a break, man. I just needed to save what was left of my brain and my sanity. And it was only by virtue of the Scottish independence referendum happening in 2014 that I started following politics back home. And uh, God, now you've set me off on another track here. I'm pretty convinced, actually. Having seen their current makeup, I think the Labour Party in Britain has been infiltrated by the Tories because they're, they're not a party anymore. They're a joke. They're an absolute joke. And I think what's going to happen as a result of that is that Britain is going to be stuck with a god-awful Tory government for the foreseeable future, and it ain't going to be pretty. Yeah, well, the same thing happened in the States. The Democrats, uh, and certainly their ideology, they used to be the champions of the working man. I mean, the idea was that the Democrats would make sure that everybody had a job and and, um, and uh, the Republicans made sure that nobody was left out. That's one of our one of our, our guests on Caravan said, and I thought that was really pretty well put. They would take care of business and the, the uh, they'd ride herd over the, uh, as we say in Texas, uh, they would, uh, you know, ride herd over the... Uh, over the corporations and make sure that through corporatocracy uh, people weren't left out and the Democrats would make sure that people were taken care of and they'd have a pension and things would be fair and there wouldn't be any sweatshops and so forth but now it's all about the money I mean when Dr. Uh, Dr. David Janda came on uh, he's all about prevention and so forth and nobody was interested even in the halls of Washington they had no interest in hearing his his uh protocol for prevention because there's no money in it they don't want to they don't want to drop the uh the restrictions on uh, on competing across state lines in the united states for insurance coverage because if they do that then prices will go down and they'll make less money and so forth so it's the same thing i mean that's what they do if you're up against if you're up against a uh, a political ideology how do you crack it if it won't mm. budge? Well, you just infiltrate it with enough of your own people until uh, until you dilute its strength, and then eventually you have what we have in this country, and apparently in what you, what you have in the UK as well, which is, you know, you have two parties, but actually they're identical. Yep, you nailed it, brother. 
I used to listen to a late night radio talk show in London called LBC. And about 2 a.m. every morning, the host would have a trivia phone in quiz. So I'm lying in bed listening one night and this lady calls in. She's got a couple of questions, right? And the next question comes up. Who was shot in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963? What do you think she said? She said, uh, she said, J.R. Ewing. J.R. Ewing. There you go. <laughs> wow. That doesn't surprise me in the least. Not at all. And, John, uh, speaking of uh, riding over the herd, uh, I have no idea how many people you have in your staff producing your show. I had a friend tell me that I should go independent like you did, and I said, no way. I put this show together myself, the editing, the clips, etc. Uh, and, and I could not do it without my crew. And I was just wondering, how many people do you have on staff? And I don't think I'm going to need any lawyers. Uh, you did. I, I want you to know that I contributed to your lawyers. I became a subscriber. And uh, I was just wondering, what kind of staff does it take to run your show? Well, thank you very much for for being a member. I mean, I really mean it, because we are completely we're completely member supported. Uh, well, I have a, a technical producer in there that does the actual recording, then uh, another person edits and so forth. But but then outside of uh, outside of that, you know, we have uh, office staff, and I mean, because we we ship a lot of product and answer a lot of phone calls. I mean. I don't know. There's probably, by the, at the end of the day, there are probably 15 people involved. The uh, the IT the, the combination of the IT people and the problem solvers who look after the caravanners if they have any issues, whether they're whether they're having they lost their password and and tried to reset it and couldn't, or just whatever it is. Uh, but, but yeah, but between the IT people that just keep it running, and uh, and the office staff and the production staff, there's about 15 of us. Yeah, in in our case, uh, Chris Geo set this whole thing up. He's a code writer and a musician. And as I said, I don't want to go independent because uh, he does such a fine job with this station. And we do have a family here at Truth Frequency Radio. Uh, we have two minutes till break time when I'm going to bring in the Moriarty's and we'll chat during the break. So, John. Take us out for two minutes. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Well, a lot of people that are listening to your program right now, maybe you gave them the heads up that I was going to be on there. They're probably already wise to it. But for new people out there, uh, as I say, you know, there there are some out there that will say, I'm completely free from, from corporate influence. And it's like, no, you're not. You are a corporation. You are corporate influence. I'm totally divorced from the mainstream media. No, you are mainstream media. And as a matter of fact, you supported Ted Cruz in the election. So, um, so the thing is, is that this audience that make it, makes up the membership of Caravan to Midnight is the most giving, caring audience that a person could ever hope to have, ever. Much more than, than I ever expected. Much more than I ever expected. And just exactly what I wanted. And so um, if you join, you will find over 700 programs already in archive. And they're good ones. They, they really are. We, uh, uh, a couple of people just work continuously on, on keeping up with what is interesting and what, what will be interesting in the future. I'm, I'm engaged in that myself. But uh, this is not happening right now but it may very well happen in the near future so let's talk to them and let's get ahead of this thing a little bit and if you join us you don't have to spring for 60 bucks for the whole year you can you can get a half a year or you can get a, a quarter three months at a time but i would urge everyone just go to our youtube channel and check out check out those uh, daily news segments that's the first part of the program and um and the thing is is a lot of people are having trouble with the uh, money now and i suspect it's going to get worse because I'm seeing some symptoms here that I'll go in with you I'll go into with you later, but I'm seeing a few symptoms. When you see corporations that um, that uh, are separate from each other and yet they're in the same field, but they all begin having 
trouble at about the same time as uh, things start. The behavior is the same between all of them. The last time that this happened was in 2008, and then 2009, and then there was the collapse, and then 2009 came. So we put that stuff up on YouTube because it's free, and the people who do, they don't have five bucks a month. They don't. So I'm not going to leave them out just because they don't have the dough. And we are back with Mr. John B. Wells, perhaps the height of my career so far, other than having a show with Jimmy and Joanne Moriarty, perhaps my most important show on Truth Frequency Radio. And I brought them into studio. Uh, They are friends with John B. Wells as well. And so, Jimmy and Joanne, happy to be here. Great. Great John B., great to hear you. You know, you have a most distinguished voice in, in radio, and, and folks have heard you that don't even know who you are. So uh, <laughs> proud to be with you, Ken. Good to be with you, too. Thanks for the compliment. And, and, and having met you in person, John B., I'd like to say you're absolutely you're, stand-up guy. You're a stand-up guy. Your energy is great. You're a 100% yeah. person. We really appreciate it. And I've right, got to you, tell you you're something. You're getting a little blush out of me now, so knock it off. <laughs> You've got a great audience. You know, we Joanne and I are out on the end of a little limb, and we've had so many – wonderful emails and and letters of support and stuff You've got a great audience and and it really it's one of the most outstanding responses we've had and in that vein also i want to tell you that the that the people of libya thank you so much for having shake cantouche on there he's you know he's the leader of the second largest tribe in libya he's also their their most um prominent imam and they tried to assassinate him this week and luckily they only um gave him a, a muscle wound in his leg what what happened was he's he's working with the worship on a tribe that's his tribe and he's bringing people together inside the tribe because they've all been separated there's there's outsiders he calls them but they're mercenaries and they're trying to divide all the tribes they don't want the tribes to come together because that means that there's too much strength in that for libya and so he was working with that and he got shot by one of the people that were fighting about the tribes and and he said you know you have to understand that if we could get rid of these outsiders in our country we would we would soon be finished with this and and everything would be back together again so i want people to understand that it's the john mccain's and the hillary clinton's and the obamas that sent those people in there and continue to pay for those people in there that's destroying that country yep well they're doing the same thing here they just haven't got the same traction that they've that's had right. over there yeah. That's right. Plus, we're armed here. We and are not armed in Libya. They right. can look at the blueprint of Libya and see what's going on here. Just It's point in detail exactly the same. But, you know, for you to have Sheikh Tantou, Sean, that was, a, that was a wonderful thing for you to do. And that really helped the Libyan people. Those guys need some support. You know, they need to know that the world hadn't forgotten them. What, what they need is a voice. They haven't mm-hmm. had a voice since 2010. All those speaking in the media are not voices of the Libyans. Their voices of the puppets. Yeah, the problem is, I just wish there was. I wish there was some way to, um, when you when you're able to speak with somebody like uh, like uh, Khalid Tantush, uh, I just wish that there could be more exposure. You know, I, I wish that everybody was talking to him. I, you know, I wish a bunch of outlets were talking to him and uh, yeah. and, and others as well. But you know, it's slow, but. Well, you know, I, I just have to look at it as the Lord's time, and and it's going where it needs to go. I mean, I am, I am right. you know, if I were a little bit more paranoid, um, people uh, people have heard your your interview that I'm pretty sure you have no idea these people are listening, and frequently uh, people come on the program, and, and I'm thinking, wow, I really want to talk to this person, and they say, you know, I've been with you since the program started. You know, it's great to be with you. It's like what? I don't say what, but that's what I'm thinking. So. Uh, Maybe it's maybe it's it's got more reach and more traction than we know. I and think it's it not does. just a, 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 maybe it does. Maybe it's not just a. I don't. I, I, in the words of Detective Harry Callahan, a famous uh, figure in American history, you know, I don't want it to be that we're holding, putting our finger in the hole in the dike, and the whole dike is collapsing around that <laughs> finger. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's an image. 
but you know we're hearing we're hearing some things that that indicate that there are some quality ears hearing what's going on there have been a lot of ears listening but they've been they've been blockaders rather than people who are really trying to do something good and and so we're hearing that and that's encouraging to us you know our story is dramatic and it's it's uh unbelievable but the real the real story is how this country destroyed libya and, and syria etc yemen and and ukraine well, and the talking, people never knew about it. And so it goes way past us. You know, this is not this. The story really doesn't have anything to do with us anymore. All we are is is the storytellers at this juncture. We we had a long discussion today with somebody about the military industrial complex. And they told us that, well, it's still it's still running most everything in this country. That's one of the big problems. And that, uh, you know, stopping that, stopping John McCain and all these all these Pentagon people who are not patriots, who are not. Uh, for any peace or any kind of stopping wars, it, it's a difficult event. You know, you, you have to break through some of these lines that they've got shut off. They've got the FBI can completely control. He said, Comey's a member of that complex. John B oh, says, yeah. since this is kind of an informal uh, get together, which is one of the things we like about Bill's show, because you're not, you're not uh, bearing any formality at all, you know, but uh, uh, do you have, you receive, pressure from outside or are you able to, to defray all that uh no we don't good be because we've made it clear that if we do then there's going to be some information released that uh, is going to be very embarrassing to some people and that this information has been distributed to well over 50 people now well over 50 people now and these people do not know each other and i do not know them personally it was not it was not um easy to set this up on the one hand, but on the other hand, once I figured out how to do it, it became very, very easy. So the thing is, is uh, I don't mess with them too much and, uh, and they don't mess with me. And as, as long as, um, as long as we have this understanding that, well, and the other part is, is that there are a lot of good people in, uh, there are a lot of good people in CIA. There are a lot of good people in FBI. The ones who are running them, the ones that are running the outfit, the bosses, those are the ones that are the problem. I mean, I'll take uh, Director Comey, for example. I've gone back and forth on him. A lot of people, a lot of FBI guys say that he's a good guy, you know. Well, he's getting some pressure from somewhere. The question is where? And he was a big shot at Lockheed Martin for a while. What does that tell us? I mean, what is this supposed to tell us? Yeah. The same thing that, uh, look, folks, here's, here's a problem. I'm, t I'm speaking to the listeners out there. Statistically speaking, and we know what Mark Twain said about statistics, there are lies, damned lies, and statistics. So you, you can come up with statistics to support just about anything. They may or may not be accurate. But these seem to be pretty accurate. And the statistic that I refer to is this one. About 10% of the people out there, if you really want to stretch a point, really stretch it, then go to 15%. But only, but let's say, between 10 and 15% of everybody out there is actually capable of of independent thinking. If you are capable of independent thinking, you must understand the following. You are a leader, period. You are not a private. You are a captain. You are a lieutenant. You are an officer. You can lead people, but you have to know that, that you, you have already been given your rank and the war is well underway. So come presently upon your hour and lead. People want, you know, earlier in the program, uh, I, I said people want to worship. They're designed to worship. And they will worship something. Whether it's good or bad, they will. And well, that, that was the uh, one, one subject you brought up. Uh, I was talking to uh, John earlier, Scottish John earlier. Uh, when you have people bowing to the Pope, Bowing to uh, Obama, bowing to the Queen, John B., can I ask you, what the hell are we doing here when so many of them are bowing to people that are ruling and, and tyrannizing them? So I've come up to the conclusion we were sent down here, as you know, uh, to gather our troops to take them to our starships in the hereafter. But, John, what the hell are we doing here with all of these bowers? Well, they're followers. 
And uh, those people that they're bowing to were put in a position to be, to be bowed to, to be given the kissing of backside ceremony. The, but once they're revealed, a lot of those people that were doing the bowing, they're, they're going to be upset. Uh, if for no other reason, then it's like, well, you're calling me an idiot because I bowed to that person. It's like, no, you're not an idiot. You were fooled. Well, that's just as bad. You're calling me a fool now. Uh, that's where they'll take it because independent thinkers do not operate on emotion. Independent thinkers operate on facts. I mean, for example, how many people know that progressive insurance is actually, I think he stepped down from uh, his position with the, the, uh, with one of the liberal organizations, whether it's the Democrat Party or the ACLU or one of them. But now how many people know that progressive insurance was named progressive because it's the ideology, it's the political ideology behind the name? And that's really true. Uh, another one is uh, Starbucks. Uh, let's see, another one is um, oh, uh, AARP. Most of the people uh, voted uh, were, uh, that are members of AARP they weren't for Obamacare, but AARP threw their their support behind Obamacare and Obama. You have to look and see who you're spending money with. When the homosexuals decided they're just going to show, you know, that Chick Fil A outfit, just what a bunch of bastards they are, and they're just going to run them out. They made the guys whole year in a week because people stood up. That's the thing. Normal people do not want a brawl. Normal people do not need a safe space. Their home is their safe space. Their family is their safe space. Their, their beloved, their, their children, whatever, you know, their significant other, that's their safe space. These other people need an actual designated safe space so that like-minded idiots can go there and they can all get together and comfort each other. You know, I'll tell you what Brendy said. When these idiot Swedes put on their, their pussy hats, that's what they call them. And it's true, because that expression actually has nothing to do with genitalia. It is actually short for the word pusillanimous, meaning small-minded, petty, or cowardly. And I tell people, you don't have to believe me, just look it up. So here are these morons sitting there with their pussy hats on. And, you know, Brendy said, you know, that hat is, suits you perfectly, because that's what you are, pussies. Now, bleep off and go and be men. And that's what they should do. But they don't. Instead, it's like we're gonna we're gonna stand in solidarity. Stand in solidarity with what? Here, let me tell you what you're standing in solidarity with. Flash headline: Wow, women, female athletes are being crushed by other female athletes who used to be men. What? Mm-hmm. Nobody saw that coming. Nobody saw yeah. that one coming at all. That guys that convert to being hey, I feel like I'll put on my dress today and a bra and some panties. <laughs> These people are like participating in sports. Men are stronger than women, not in each and every case. You're going to want, want you know, you're going to run into a Josie every once in a while, like uh, in Moon for the Misbegotten and you know, Eugene O'Neill play. She carried a club, right? She was a big old girl and she'd kill you. But uh, they're not all like that. They're not all Amazons that are, that are you know, warlike and carrying weapons. But uh, uh, I digress. Men are stronger. They're built stronger. They're built bigger than, than women. And altogether. that, 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 brings me back to uh, what, what you sparked in me as for, you know, completing your mission here. And men are just, when are women going to stand up for women? Because we got this death cult coming in, <laughs> changing their genitalia, uh, putting that they're actually, I don't know what you call them. They're not even uh, beings. I mean, they're, they're hidden under everything. So uh, your, your mission as a man to wake other men up, I cannot believe that men do not stand up for their women in Europe who are being raped. It's just, are they afraid of uh, causing a war in their own town to protect no, their they're, women? No, they're not. No, they're not, brother. They're not. They're afraid of getting in trouble because they're sniveling little weenies. They're not prepared to say, you know what? Screw you. A, a woman that, that, that I love was raped, and I'm going to raise hell until I get some attention here. Well, we'll put you in jail. Well, then put me in jail. But then the other men need to show up and go, you need to let him out of jail, because this is what's going to happen if you don't. None of you SOBs are, are ever going to hold office again. We will throw you out. We will cut off your money. We will, we will create incidents of civil disobedience that you just won't believe. What this man did in being outraged over the rape of his woman, his daughter, his sister, his wife, his mother, 
was entirely correct. He is within his rights to raise hell about this. And you want to put him in jail? Well, let me tell you what. You're going to, by the time we're finished with you, you're going to wish, you're going to flee to a jail. So that will become your safe space. But won't anybody do it until push comes to shove? John, how many you, people? Go ahead. Did, did you see that guy in Texas that beat that man to death that raped his uh, 13 year old or five year old daughter? Raped mm -hmm. his wife? And they, they said no charges were. They dropped the charges and against him. Th that but is God entirely bless correct. Texas. God bless that Texas. Is, the law is still on the books. It's the deserve to be sh shot right. law or killed. And if, if 12 of your peers determine that the, the guy that you killed need to be killed, then you're scot-free. Well, that's what John Texas. Mellencamp wrote in that song, uh, Crumbling Down. Some people are no damn good. Uh -huh. What are you going to do, right. let them out so they can do it again? Exactly. But, John, I've got to tell you, you know, taking the, the hard road or taking yeah. the right road isn't easy. We're, we're proof positive of that. They make it so easy to do the wrong things and so hard to do the right things. And so most people will opt for the easy road. And you threaten somebody with going to jail, gosh, that's their biggest fear because they, they watch them. They know what's happened in jail. But it's hard. I can promise you it's a tough road to take. But we all need to do it. We all need to do it. Look what they did to Jesus. What did he do <laughs> to anybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Well, he threw out the money traders. That's the same guys causing the trouble today. Well, that's right. I think everybody needs to understand. Cut these people's money off. Yeah. Yep. Just quit buying it and it will go away. If you want something to go away, stop buying it. Now NBC is going to, you know, we're thinking about, uh, you know, swinging to the right a little bit. Well, they're not doing that because they believe that it's the right thing to do. They're doing it so they can save their business. Yeah. Don't let them save their business. Cut them off. Don't ever watch them again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, like you said, the Starbucks CEO is stepping down. He's Good. cost five straight, uh, what do they call them, terms, or five straight quarters. quarters of downturn in the stock market because of his his lunacy. Well, he's a moron. He decides yeah, he he's going to hire 15,000 uh, Muslims. Yeah. yeah. Target is right? all out of business. Yeah. Well, remember... Uh, Progressive Insurance, AERP, and Starbucks, those are the big ones. It's like yeah. you've had en you've had enough of our money. Yeah. That's it. And That's you right. walk in there, and it's like a cult anyway most of the time. So I, I don't know. I'll make my coffee at home. I don't, right. I, don't, I don't have to go to Starbucks. Yeah, yeah Starbucks has nasty coffee anyway. <laughs> Always. They're, they're, their little custom drinks are okay, but, you know, get an, get an Americano if you're going to actually have coffee. You know, that way it's heading and sitting there for an hour. Yeah, we have to drive a hundred <laughs> miles to get to one anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah that, you know, some of this stuff is going to sound draconian to people. It's like, well, that's just mean. It's like, listen, sometimes meanness is meanness is being ugly to people r without reason. But but once you say, you know what, you this outfit outfit X Y Z over there, they're responsible for the maiming and killing of a few people and, you know, other people being fired and so forth. Not only are we going to run you out of business, but don't say you're sorry and then come back with a different sign because we're going to find out who you are. You're, you're not going to be in business anymore. This is your punishment. You know, you can go work for somebody else, but you're not going to have anybody working for you because the moment we discover that you have, uh, you have resurfaced under a different name, we're going to cut your money off to that company too. You're out of business permanently because of what you did to people. If you've had a change of heart, that's good. The Lord will be impressed. We are not. <laughs> that's right. And that's it. Speaking of the Lord, uh, the, the liberals and the snowflakes, they try and play off Jesus as a pussy. Jesus was tough. Oh, you can't do that. Je what would Jesus do? Well, Jesus flipped. He flipped the money changers tables. He brought out his whip and he cast them out of the temple, which is exactly the example for us because nothing has changed since Jesus said out. So we well, have to exactly. Does anybody remember the one about, I didn't come here with any good news. I came here with a sword. Yes. Amen. So, 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 so right. all of you who have a cloak, go sell it and get yourself a sword. And I think it was Peter uh, said, uh, Lord, I have two. And he goes, okay, that's enough. So. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't understand how it is that on the other side, they can be so do mean things, do horrible things, say horrible things, uh, treat people badly uh, and act like that's allowed. That's fine because we said it, but you can't do they that. They force fed well, us political fine. correctness. That really not political correctness. It's little balls of shit and they taste bad. Yeah. Well, there was a thing I can't remember. I can't remember which university it was. It was from uh, campusreform.org. Check check into that one regularly because you'll see so much stupid stuff going on there. You won't believe it. But uh, the brutality of masculinity, because people think to be meek means to be sniveling a weenie. That's not what it means. It means power, however much you have of it. Maybe you have great power, power under control. So to me, the ultimate masculinity is a very powerful man treating his woman with tenderness and care and attention and deference, you know, and still being able to say, mm, I don't think this is a good way to go and just be cool. What's happened to the women now is, is that for so long, these, these, uh, these, this topless stripper prostitute mentality has, and the porn, you know, all these idiots running around, they just, oh, they just can't, you know, they can't actually, most of them cannot actually please their partner, but they compensate for this by just going from one partner to the next to the next to the next to the next, so that nobody's ever really paying attention to it, and they don't really have a, the opportunity to get into a relationship of any depth. But the thing is, uh, the strip bar and prostitute mentality, which really started pretty much with Madonna, and, and her trashy antics, along with her trashy songs. If you see now, she's pretty burnt out. I don't want to see her in one of those costumes. Never did, but especially not now. Women thought, well, we have to be like this uh, to be appealing. W women want to be appealing. You know, that's chauvinistic. I don't care. It's true. You know, go out into public. Leave your safe space and go look around. How do the men act? How do the women act? Well, now you're given a choice of men, either a brute or a hand-holding little fairy. So there's, <laughs> you know, and with the women, you have either a, a prude who acts like a prude, probably the wildest thing in the whole neighborhood, but she conducts herself like a prude. She dresses prudishly and so forth. And then you've got the other ones that look like they're ready to go hooking. So I think probably once a, a nation loses its moral compass, the rest is soon to follow. Because as it stands now, Virtually everything is allowed. Before long, we'll we'll uh, we'll adopt the uh, the attitude of that black woman in Sweden who says, "Well, Swedes aren't deported when they commit murder or rape, so why should immigrants?" Yeah, I mean that's some real genius ideology there. So we have to stand up and say no. I have declared 2017 the year of intolerance. I have I have effectively destroyed Cinco de Mayo, which was a stupid thing to observe anyway. You know, if you just want to have a party, have one on Tres de Mayo or Cuatro de Mayo or maybe even Seis. But Cinco de Mayo, why celebrate a momentary Mexican victory over a numerically inferior French force only to have that victory overturned about two weeks later? And the French installed their guy. And that was it. But I yeah. have declared 2017 to be the year of intolerance. This is the year that we decide what we're not going to tolerate anymore, beginning with not spending our money where we don't. Where, where these, this company uses m my money and your money and the people in the audience's money to go and do things with political agendas and, and, and operate, uh, operations, whether it's, a, you know, whether it's an open society's foundation or whether it's the Democratic Party, to do things against you. Quit spending your money with them. Find out who they are. It take, all it takes is a simple Google search, in most cases, and you can find out. But be discerning. Don't just... Oh, you know, it's all good. No, it's not all good. It's only a little bit of good. Look back over the last century. Well, we were at peace most of the time. No, we weren't. We were at war most of the time with momentary little spikes of peace. I mean, how many do we need? World War One, Roaring Twenties. Oh, God, the Depression. Now World War Two. Now Korea. Now Vietnam. Now the Middle East. I mean, how much, how many, listen, I saw this thing the other day. It was the most abominable thing I've ever seen, and I needed to see it. If you just uh, type in uh, article, Gone with the Wind, it'll come up about, oh, just a few kids and women, dogs and cats and other human beings, you know, uh, just got hit by a U.S. airstrike. And you can actually see these two, two little girls, and they literally had their guts knocked out of them. 
from the con- from the concussion wave. And I'm looking at this picture just going, I, I don't even know what I was feeling, but it was a very strange feeling. <laughs> and ultimately, it's just live. wrong. You we saw it? that live in Libya. And, and you know, what they say, what the, they say it's acceptable collateral damage for their agenda, you know. Oh, really? Acceptable collateral damage? Yeah. Yep. Well, those those people need to be the collateral damage. In Absolutely. Fact, as far as I'm concerned, they're a bunch of spares. And they're nothing but collateral anyway. Exactly. So, uh, Okay, we're we're coming up on the last thirty seconds of, of the show, and I wanted no, to no, no, I want to raise more hell. <laughs> okay, listen, you want you want to come Hate back it, Wednesday? You want to come back Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday? You can be, I can be your co-host on my show, sir. So I just wanted to thank you so very much for for joining us, and uh, let Brendy know that I enjoy speaking to her as well. A lovely lady in South Africa. And yes, it's time for white Europeans to stand up and take back the control that we built for the rest of the planet. Defend. Uh, Defend defend. Christendom. We are men of the West. Remember it. Will do.